Hello everyone, my name is Kurazar and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. That's right, we are back in the world, having just finished our house, and I spent a little bit of time organizing, but I haven't made any of the changes to the house that I mentioned I was thinking about doing in the previous episode. And that's because I didn't want to let these turnips sit here in the field much longer, because we want to get them out of the ground so that we can replant them and begin rotating our crops. So I wanted to bring you all in pretty much right after the end of the last episode, which was maybe 10 hours ago in game. And we're gonna harvest these turnips together. It looks like they are all mature. So we should get a pretty good haul. I guess I should say a harvest. And then we'll come back tomorrow and check on these onions and maybe the parsnips. Everything else seems like it's gonna be a little bit longer. So let's go ahead and harvest these guys up and see what we get. Okay, so that was 26 turnip plants that we harvested. And we have a few more that got caught in our irrigation system here. And there we go. And you'll notice that we have more turnip seeds than we started with. Now granted, I had five in my inventory already. But every time you harvest a plant that you planted, there is a 5% chance that you will get back an extra seed. So in this way, you can slowly grow your crops. I mean, you can expand your collection of crops. Now we're going to go ahead and put these turnips into one of these vessels here. Maybe not. Tell you what, we will take these onions out. We'll chew on them just to get them out of the way. And then we will reorganize these a little bit. Let's get the seeds out of here. Seeds don't really need to be in these vessels. So I'm gonna reorganize this and we're gonna talk about food spoilage and how to slow that down. We can't prevent it entirely because food will always eventually go bad, but we can do a lot of things to make sure our food lasts us as long as possible. And that's what we're gonna focus on today. I plan on having a bit of a more focused episode since we've had a few episodes about adventuring and building houses and exploring all manner of things, I want to bring our focus a bit closer to home and we're gonna talk about food preservation and cellars. I've spent a few minutes organizing our vessels here and I moved our seeds up to a new basket up here along with a stack of dirt. And I wanna turn our focus to the info at the top of the screen there. Do you see how when I hover over a block it tells me the food perish speed of vegetables, grains, and quote, other, which would be mostly meat and fruit, I guess. I think milk may fall into that category too, but milk usually isn't stored in vessels. But these two vessels actually have a very slight difference between them. We have 0.26 for vegetable and 0.27 for vegetable, and grain is also 0.01 difference between the two. Here, these baskets are at 0 0.37, 0 0.39, and 0.39. And this is a factor of a couple of things. One, we're getting a little bit of benefit because we have a stone, actually mostly clay and dirt house, but also things like the access to outside air, as well as access to sunlight, even if it isn't currently shining, affects this spoil speed. Just like in real life, in Vintage Story, you can preserve your food longer by putting your food in a cool, dark place, a cellar, which is why we left this open here, and I haven't done anything with it just yet. We get a torch in hand, and we'll take a peek downstairs. We can't even get very far. Let's dig you out. There we go. So this is going to be our cellar. Well, it'll be, part of this will be our cellar. Because cellars have a maximum size, of course, to prevent too much airflow. And to be effective, a cellar needs to have walls made of stone, ceramics, or dirt. And that's why we have these mud brick walls and a strewn straw floor, which is technically considered a dirt block because it is made with dirt. And then we have down here, we have this rock beneath. Now I am going to make a few more shovels because I am down to one and a few durability on the last shovel I had. And I'm gonna go ahead and clear out this dirt down here and we're gonna see what we have to work with. Thank you. 
And there we have it, a 9 by 7 by 3 basement. Now, as I said before, a cellar has a limit on its size, which is 7 by 7 by 7. So no single dimension can be larger than 7 blocks. Now, technically, I think that's not quite true. You can have a larger one, but it takes a penalty. So we're going to make sure that we max out at a 7x7x7 seven by seven by seven room here, or in our case, 7x7x3. Seven by seven by and that would mean putting a single wall here across this plane and having this room be our cellar. And this seems a little excessive to me. I don't need a huge cellar down here. I don't think we're going to have that much food to store. So I think we're going to push this back a couple blocks, like so. And we'll leave room for other storage in here. And for now, we're going to make this wall out of dirt. And we will put a door in. But in the future, I want to replace this with something a little nicer. Maybe more of this dark mud brick. Or maybe some cobblestone. And I just realized that I am out of food at the moment. In my inventory, at least. And so I think it's time for some hefty turnip, 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 turnip stew. My taste buds are just dancing at the prospect. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I can't hardly wait, and it's done! Ah, oh, mmm, turnips, turnips, turnips. So good. And we're gonna go ahead and put this door in place, our favorite kind of door. Why did it work? Twice in a row? Man. And now we have our first cellar. It's basic, but it'll do for now. So up here, as I showed you, we have this vessel with a 0.27 vegetable speed, 0.18 grain speed, and 0.36 other speed. We're going to ditch this torch for the moment, which is going to make it very hard to see downstairs. Unless I go and put a torch down there, that would be smart, Corazar. So with the door closed, we now have a 0.21 parish speed for vegetables, a 0.14 for grain, and a 0.28 for other. That's not quite the best we can get. I think the best we can get is a 0.2 or 0.19 and 0.12 and a 0.25, but that's pretty darn close. But one problem we have is we have so many cranberries and red currants and white currants and this meat that they're likely to go bad before we get a chance to eat them all within the next 7.8 days or less in some cases. So we need a way to preserve food for longer somehow. Now there are certain food preservation methods that we don't have yet. We need honey to make jam, to make fruit last a long while. But what we can do is we can make meals and seal them in crocs. And if we put the crocs in the cellar, then they will also last a much longer time. Let's take a look at the difference in how long these things last. First, we're going to need to make some crocs. Let's do that. And there's four crocs. I'm going to go ahead and make a few more so that we don't have to spend too much time waiting for them to all finish firing in the kiln. Well, that took all morning, but I have 24 crocs ready to fire. Let's go ahead and toss these in the kilns and get them cooking. And while those are firing, I think I want to focus on another few amendments for our cellar. It is quite dark down here when I remove this torch. And there we go. And right now we're going to get some sunlight. And it won't be pitch black here because of just the game's lighting system. But I would like to have some light down here because it will prevent or at least deter drifters from spawning here. Underground areas that are dark, and I don't know if that means just below sea level or anything with a roof over it is a prime place for drifters to spawn and I want to keep that from happening. Now a torch will do that just fine. However, I have to come down here every 48 hours remember to knock this off the wall and replace it. Which means that if we go away for an extended period of time, 
we might come back to have all of our torches burned out. And I'm going to replace them all now because it's been a day or so. Now, early game, we only have a few lighting solutions. We have torches. We also have fat lamps, which I showed you before. And we might be able to get candles if we were to find some bees or if we were to pan through that bony soil. I'm not going to go on a bee hunt yet because that could be an episode long journey, but I might pan for some candles in our bony soil, but I'll do that off camera. For now, I want to focus on some fat lamps. However, if you'll notice, we only have, I think, one fat, if any, there we go, one fat. We need fat for more than just lamps, though. We also need fat to seal those crocs. You can use a crock unsealed, and it will last in a cellar probably 36 days with a fresh hot meal. But with a lump of fat, to seal it, it'll last much longer. And I'll show you just how long that is. So let's go out and find something that we can hunt, and that will give us some fat. I'm thinking some of the bighorn sheep down on the plain might be perfect. And I see a couple in the distance. And I think there's a male strutting around over here. Let's go check them out. Oh, look at that. We have a whole family down here, and mushrooms! Well, heck, I don't even need any of these any of this meat. So we have four lambs and one female. I'm going to leave them alone, because we want those lambs to grow up. I think I'm going to look a little farther afield, and see if I can find a lone male or female, or even a mated pair. Here we go. I think we have a likely candidate or two. We have here a female bighorn sheep, and over there we have her guardian, possibly unless she's been separated from her male. They're kind of far apart. So normally mated pairs spawn with the male, and if the female or the kids, or whatever offspring, get too far away, then they'll actually sort of run over to back to the male. I don't see that happening, so I think we can take out this female without angering the male. Let's go ahead and give that a shot. And we're going to make a little pillar right here. Going to take aim. <gasps> and she is down, okay. And he did not even notice. Okay, perfect. Creature weight is good, it means she'll give us the full complement of meat. Holy cow, that is a lot of meat. One large raw hide, one lump of fat, which is what we're here for, and five bones. And you know what? I might chuck out something to make room for those bones. Let's get rid of this knife. And we'll just, I said, let's get rid of this knife. And we'll just keep these bones. Now, I'd like a little more fat. Let's take care of this male over here. Hey, buddy. Now, males are a little bit different than females, and they're a bit more aggressive. So if we come over here and say hello, he's going to rear back, and he might ram us. Hey, buddy. See? Oh, wow. He hit us pretty hard. <laughs> so when you're dealing with males, you need to keep your distance and note that if you don't take them down with and they can get to you, then you might go flying and take a good bit of damage. We took, what? four and a half damage from that. That is pretty significant. Let's get up here behind him and so that when he gets scared and runs away, we're off into the plane and we can just chase him down. Hey, buddy. It's your turn. And he is down. Just like that. 15 more meat, two hides, with the fat, and six bones. And that's a pretty solid start. And different animals will give you different amounts of meat and bones and so on. I think pigs, or I guess hogs are called, will give you more fat and somewhat less meat. And we have lead ore galore. I didn't mean to rhyme that. Anyway, I'm going to maybe hunt a couple more, and I will bring you back when we are back at home and ready to talk about fat. And I'm running home in the middle of the night, and we have a light temporal storm coming up, so we will need to be on the lookout for that. 
Okay, we are home, and we're going to act fast and get this meat into this vessel to keep it fresh. So we have 4.8 and 3.8 days, and we got some seasoned bones, and we got we got four fat. I only found a couple more sheep to kill. Ah, that stupid door. And with our inventory organized, I'm going to go out and make a very basic drifter defense system. It is not even going to be a trap. Did I just hear something? I better not have. Another door. So I'm going to make a very basic drifter cage here for myself. I'm going to put it maybe here. That should keep them out of my house. Oh, I hear that. We're going to run real quick back to home and hopefully avoid drifters. Here they come. They're throwing stones already. I think they're burning up in there. Oh, they are real stupid. At least one of them is burning up in there. Our home is very much not drifter safe, and with all these different places they could spawn, like up in that too tall window or in any of these windowsills, I don't feel like putting down all the stones and then picking them back up, which is why I made that little hut over there, which we should be able to use to defend ourselves against the drifters. And we'd also have to get the basement here as well, which I'm a little worried about even now, because they might spawn in there. Well, I don't think there's any anything for it. We need to just make that mad dash. Off we go. Bye, guys. Ooh. There's one right here. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and drop all these stones here so we don't get any surprises. Ooh, okay. This is going to be a heck of a night. I will just bring you all back when this is all over and we can get back to our discussion on food storage. And maybe we will just happen to get the ingredients we need to set our spawn here. Oh, and here we have it. Oh, a temporal gear. Okay. So really quick before these guys despawn and before we get to do anything else, I'm going to go in here and set our spawn point inside our house so that if we die, we will respawn right in this area. I don't know that it actually causes to spawn back in the house, but it should be close enough. So just grab your temporal gear in hand, crouch, point at a block, and hold right click, and you'll see it spin faster, and then blam. This is our new spawn point. Oh, that feels good. And again, if you have any issues with motion sickness, now the light storms don't have as bad of a visual effect, but when we get to medium and heavy storms, it can be a little dizzying if you're not ready for it. So if you have any issues with motion sickness, you might want to skip ahead and miss out on this temporal storm. Oh, geez. Wow. Okay, that hurt a lot. Let's heal up and hope he doesn't see us again from down there. And we need to uh, fix up that ground down there. Ooh. Oh, my. He got us pretty good, didn't he? <laughs> okay, back we go. Try to run around these guys and see if we can make them 
Okay, maybe we can get that into his. Ah! Oh, good. I didn't like that at all. Hey, buddy. Can you not do that again? And I don't know if you're noticing, but every time that we kill a drifter, our temporal stability has gone up a little bit. Ooh. And our health goes down whenever that happens. <laughs> okay, he snuck up on us. Sounds like they're back. Let's get back to killing. Let's cut these guys up, huh? Oh, this is great. Okay. I'm just going to ditch you. And we're going to, you know, we'll come back with this other double header. What have you got for us? Oh, another one and four rusty gears. Holy cow. These guys are like where the money is at. Despite the death, was a great haul. Let's go put these away and then we'll gather up our spears and we'll get back to our topic. And quite conveniently, all of our crocs are finished firing. Now, when you cook, it's best to use a variety of ingredients because the ingredients you eat have an effect on your total hit points. See how we have these different levels of nutrition in our stats screen? Those directly affect our overall hit points with each full bar representing two and a half more hit points. So we can get a total of, what's that, five, 10, 12 and a half more hit points over our original 15, and we're already up to 19. Another important thing to note is that each crock only stores four meals, but you can cook six meals at a time inside the cooking pot. So you can either just make one crock and have two meals for yourself. You can lower your cooking down to four meals at a time. Or what we're going to do is we're going to make two separate meals because I have enough to make a second batch of this and we're going to fill three crock pots with it. And now I think we'll sit in for a bit of cooking ASMR. And our food is ready. And boy, does it smell good, and I have my bowl ready. But this meal isn't for eating today. Instead, we're going to pick up a crock. And crocks, when they're raw, stack to four. Sorry, to eight. However, when they are fired and usable, they cannot stack at all. There's one to a stack, so it can be a bit inconvenient. Simply right-click on your soup pot, and we now have a crock. If we put it on the ground, we can take a look at it. It now has a little label on it. In the last version of the game, you could actually look at a crock on the ground, and it would tell you how long it had before it spoiled. Now I think you can only look at it if you have it on a shelf. We don't have shelves yet, because we can't make planks since we have no saw. So for now, we'll have to look at it in our inventory. But for now, we're going to put this downstairs. And we're going to just leave it here, I think. And we'll pick up the second half of that meal. Or say the latter third of the meal. And we are empty again and ready to cook. I'm going to put this downstairs to keep it on as long of a timer as possible put it in a separate square here so we know we're working with it and we will make a second batch of that and what I just did there is there's a feature where if you hold down control and use the mouse wheel you can pick up items by scrolling down or place them by scrolling up so I was just out checking on the crops and they're not quite done today the center rows need about another 12 to 18 hours so we'll check them tomorrow but I don't hear the rattle of that lid anymore. So let's break our door, replace it, and check on our stew. Perfect. And we can right-click on you, and should now have four meals in it. There we go, four meals. So we will move these off our bar, pick up another crock, and we'll hit you again. There we go, we are empty. So let's now go down and take a look at the different spoil timers if this one has cooled down enough to actually see. Because I think we can throw these into a storage vessel. Here we go. So in this cellar, this is fresh for 21 and a half days, which is pretty good. If I were to have a meal and carry it with me, it might last more like five to seven days. Now, this is all well and good, but 
this isn't going to get us through winter. So what we can do instead is if we take this crock and we put a bit of fat on top of it, we can seal it. Let's seal it and put it back in there. It is now good for 1.7 years. So we could have this through our second winter with the caveat that as this timer ticks down, so does the timer once you unseal it. And once you've, once you've drawn from this pot, you can reseal it using more fat or more beeswax if you have any. But let's say this timer gets down to 0.4 years and we unseal it, the contents inside might only have one and a half or two days left before they spoil. So you don't want to leave your sealed rocks too long, otherwise you may end up scrambling to eat it all before it goes bad. Now I'm going to leave these two crocs down here unsealed because I'm going to eat food from them on a regular basis. I think I'll spend the rest of the night cooking up the rest of this meat and trying to get these berries into food before they go bad. And then in the morning, we'll go check on those crops because I think it's about time to rotate them. Hey, look, some are fireflies. You might not be able to see them if you're on a lower resolution, but they're a neat little effect to have in the summer at night. Very atmospheric. And what else is atmospheric is lighting. I want to take this fat and these bowls and we will combine them together to make some more oil lamps. Now, like I said, these probably won't stop drifters from spawning if it's especially during a temporal storm, but it should help keep the light level to something manageable down here, especially if we, if we light it up like this. Take that off. I'd say that's pretty bright. So we will leave them like that for now, and I might expand that and put them on the wall later when the walls are finished. Good morning, everyone, and especially to this butterfly that just flew through our house. Cute. It is a bright new day and a second butterfly. Let's go check on those crops. I think they might be about ready. And I think, with a very few exceptions, most of them are. Yeah, these middle ones could use a few more hours. We'll go ahead and harvest the ones that are ready and we'll talk about them. And maybe by then, the rest will be done. So what we'll do is when these all mature, these two rows here were my potassium plants, my potassium loving plants. What I will do is I'll move them down to here, the phosphorus loving plant area. I'll move the phosphorus down to these two rows and I'll move the nitrogens that were down here over to the potassium area. And that way the potassium, which is currently down just under 100% in these rows here, and for the carrots just over 100%, We'll have a chance to recuperate. And same for any phosphorus that these plants sapped from the soil and the nitrogen over here. Now it may come to the point where we need to leave the fields fallow for a bit and if we do it's no big deal. Uh, we can just wait a bit and then plant some more or we could even make new farms using some of the medium soil around here and just farm with that for a little bit. And that is our lesson on food storage and preservation and a little bit of crop rotation. Well, that is all we have time for in this episode of the Vintage Story Guide, where we learned how to preserve food and to make crocs and how to survive or not in another temporal storm. My name has been Kurazar. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.